For day nine of my horror movie month, I actually watched Devil, the M. Night Shyamalan film. Now, when I say M. Night Shyamalan, he actually came up with the story, albeit he didn't write the script and he didn't direct this, which is probably why it's the best film he's made since Signs. Um, essentially, M. Night Shyamalan has always been a good idea guy, but I always find that his direction and his scripting often ruins his own movies. Um, Essentially, the the kind of reliance on a twist ending and and bits and pieces like that. The first three of his movies, um, The Sixth Sense, Unbreakable, and Signs, I love. I love all of those movies. The Village and Lady in the Water, I like, but they are on a downward slope. And then The Happening is just one of the worst films I've ever seen, and I didn't bother with The Last Airbender. <laughs> Airbender. Um, but Devil is a, a great little horror film. Now, essentially, it follows a plot of um, a group of people are trapped in an elevator in a skyscraper, and one of them is the devil. One by one, when the lights go out intermittently, they get killed off until there's only one of them left. Um, the film itself is only about 80 minutes long. Honestly, this clocked in actually probably about... 75 or something like that. We we were watching it that night and it literally finished at the 1 hour and 15 minute mark. That's when the credits started rolling, so it's a really quick and dirty movie. Um, the standout components of this, though, are the acting. For the most part, is great. There, there's some really good, like, kind of small character actors in this that you will have seen in, un, un, in other stuff, um, but they all kind of bring their all to this, and um, the, the interplay and the dynamic between all the characters in the elevator and also the, the police and the security watching them is great, and you really kind of buy into it. It is quite um, unsettling at times, Times, albeit I wouldn't say that it's a scary horror movie, it is interesting and at 80 minutes long it's a movie that I revisit quite regularly um, on those nights where you don't know what to watch. It's a very entertaining, quick and dirty little horror film so I would highly recommend um, Devil. It's directed by um, is it John Eric Dowdle, Dowdle who did the uh, remake of Wreck um, Quarantine which was awful, um, which is another reason I didn't hold out much hope for this, but actually, his direction, there are some very stylish shots, um, a minimal use of CGI, uh, it's a good little film, so I highly recommend Devil. Um, then on day uh, 10, I actually went to the cinema and saw Sinister, uh, Laura and I went to see Sinister on, um, on Orange Wednesdays, so that's a film that I'm not going to really talk about here because I have actually filmed a review for that on its own, so the review of Sinister will be going up shortly. Just to say very briefly, I liked Sinister, I found it to be a very interesting, compelling film, Ethan Hawke was ace in it, but it kind of lost its way towards the end, those are my very brief thoughts, the review of that will be going up shortly. Um, the day after that, uh, day 11, I actually watched Wakewood. Now, this is the first film that Hammer did upon their return to making movies. Now, Hammer, um, the two big films that they released were The Woman in Black and uh, The Resident, starring Jeffrey Dean Morgan. This is the best of the three, if you ask me. Now, this film really kind of got panned when it came out. People did not dig this movie, but to me, it's a refreshing um, sort of homage to folk horror in the same vein as like The Wicker Man. It essentially, it's set in Ireland, it follows a couple whose daughter was mauled and killed by a dog um, the year prior. They move to a little village called Wakewood where the uh, sort of, I, I don't know if he's the mayor, but basically a, an aristocrat in the village played by Timothy Spall um, has the ability to bring the dead back to life for th three days. Um, so they do this, they resurrect their daughter and she comes back not quite normal. It, it basically homages films like The Wicker Man, it homages um, Pet Cemetery. The performances are really quite good um, across the board. I, I was quite impressed by all the performances. Where the film really falls down, and this is due to its very, very, very minuscule budget, is that it's shot on digital and they've obviously used somewhat cheap digital cameras and it can be a little bit jarring especially in the nighttime scenes it looks cheap at times some of the shots are really well composed but some feel rushed and a bit straight to dvd so you take the good with the bad and um, the performances make up for it the script um although it does stumble here and there into cliched territory for the most part it's a a, a good little homage to folk horror um, and essentially some of the effects as well some of the gory effects some of them are really good and well realized and, and they have to use practical effects because i don't think they have the budget for cgi but some of them are a little bit 
you know, hit and miss. Uh, so it's very, basically the film is very rough around the edges, but if you bear with it, and if you're a fan of folk horror, which I am, The Wicker Man is probably one of my favourite horror movies, the original of course, not the horrendous Nicolas Cage remake. Um, I, I think you'll get something out of this movie, so albeit it got terrible reviews, it's not as bad as everybody says. I think it's a little gem of a film. Yes, it's rough around the edges, but if you bear with it, you'll probably find something fairly rewarding in it, so that's uh, Wakewood. On day 12, um, a friend of ours, a guy called Mark, who's probably watching this video, hi, um, came and stayed the night and we watched a, a, a few movies. We had a little bit of a mini marathon, um, starting with Red State. Now this is a film that Laura and I argued about whether or not it's a horror movie. I maintain that it is. Now I'm not going to go too much into that now because I've actually filmed another video about what is and isn't and what can and can't be considered a horror film. Red State to me is a horror movie. It has the genetic makeup of a horror film and it homages films like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, etc, etc. It's a mash of different genres, but I feel that the dominant genre in this is horror. It's obviously Kevin Smith's uh, film. It came out, was it one or two years ago? Um, I actually bought this while I was in L LA, that's why I've got the... Um the uh, Region 1 edition of this. And it essentially follows a group of teenage boys who were taken hostage by a group of religious fundamentalists and extremists who essentially protest, you know, gay funerals and, and gay bars and stuff, but they're actually um, capturing and killing not only gay people, but um, some teenagers as well. So they essentially get captured um, by this cult and are mentally kind of tortured, I suppose, and then it descends into being a siege film when the ATF uh, try to serve a uh, gun violation warrant. So it's a mesh of genre and, um, genres, horror and action for me. Um, a film that I do really like. The more I watch it, the more I like this movie. Um, the dialogue is very Kevin Smith, so you certainly get a little hint of his sense of humour shining through, but he does have and always has had a, a good ear for dialogue, uh, for realistic um, dialogue. His characters talk like real people talk, whereas in some Tarantino films, especially the later stuff, he, his characters talk like Tarantino. Um, Kevin Smith's characters talk like real people. So that's a, an upshot. Um, another upshot is it, it, it's actually shot, the cinematography has a lot of kinetic energy to it and it is very sort of uh, ferocious in its action scenes. Um, the script as well is quite interesting in that it doesn't really stick to a three-act structure. It's definitely a film of two halves, um, and it doesn't really stick to one genre. As I've said earlier, it's a mash of different genres. It's a bit messy, it's not perfect, and not all the ideas in this, especially the structural ideas, not all of them work. Um, it could be a lot more refined, but as, as rough around the edges as it is, I do really like Red State and have a lot of time for it. And I would like to see, I know that Kevin Smith says he's retiring after his next movie, but I would like to see him do more stuff like this, more kind of adventurous stuff, so that's Red State. We then had a double bill of um, two movies that, <sighs> people have a strange relationship with these, a lot of people hate them, a lot of people love them, I am somewhere in the middle. Um, they are the Hostel movies, um, written and directed by Eli Roth. Now, the first Hostel film came out, I think, in a post-Saw horror genre, when people were really ready for torture porn, as they call it. The first Hostel is not a good movie. It's fairly terrible. It's sexist, it's misogynistic, it's juvenile, it's exploitative, but not in an ironic way like films such as Grindhouse are. This film is about as close to a modern day exploitation film as we're likely to get. You know, it's there's never more than five minutes between shots of um, women with their breasts out um, or a, se a gratuitous sex scene or, or drug taking. It feels like some frat brothers got together and made a film that they thought would be cool, which is essentially what this is. It's at times difficult to get through. It has its moments of horror, but it also has a very misplaced juvenile sense of humour that really diffuses any tension in the film. The last act of this is where it really shines and hits the ground running. And you have a few little treats in there for fans of movies, like you have a, uh, a cameo from Takeshi Miike, who obviously directed Itchy the Killer. So for fans of movies, you will get something out of this, but it's a it's a tough sit. Hostel is not a good film. It's... <sighs> 
it, 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 it's just a shame that a film like this managed to get made because it is so exploitative and, and sexist and it's just not good you know what I mean like I say it doesn't do any of this in an ironic way um, which is is where it really falls down um, I still can sit and enjoy it and I watched it because I hadn't seen it in years I, I hadn't seen it since it came out on DVD so that's Hostel 1 moving on to Hostel 2 this is where Eli Roth really manages to kind of hit the ground running now the film itself I actually watched this the Halloween it came out and I barely got through it because I found it to be a lot nastier than the first film. It's essentially uh, the, the same as what's come before, except this time the main characters are played by three women. Um, and I think inherently having women placed in these um, horrible situations and being tortured just makes it a lot more unnerving than the first film. There's something, and I can't quite explain why, but there's something about seeing a female be tortured that makes it a lot nastier than a male. So this film is a, a, a lot kind of um, a, a lot nastier than the first one. Where this film really excels is it establishes first of all it picks up minutes after the first one finishes with Jay Hernandez's character it establishes quite quickly in a matter of minutes what happens to him, and then we move on and meet our new main characters. We do get a, a, a kind of glimpse into how the company behind the the torture works which is where the film really excels uh, we essentially see an inspired sequence where characters rich businessmen are bidding on people to torture while they're playing golf having breakfast with the family in a board meeting and they're sat there on their phones or PDAs placing bids on on human um, torture victims which is a, a scene that was very chilling and very well done and you have the whole Brian De Palma split screen going on so that was inspired. Um, the, the film splits in two at that point. We follow two rich brothers who essentially have paid to fly out to this country and torture the girls who we've been following so far. So the film splits into two narratives running parallel to each other. Now, the film itself is at its best when we're with the two brothers, two American brothers, um, one of which is treating the other one to um, allow him to torture a girl who resembles his wife. So um, the, the actors who play these brothers are really good. There is a very interesting dynamic and, and role reversal going on between the two of them. And the film is very interesting. Um, let's just put it this way. Hostel 2 has a lot... Um, uh, has a lot more ideas behind it than Hostel 1 did and it's a lot more interesting film and it's not as exploitative I honestly don't think there's a shot of any boobs in this um, shot with the the reason to titillate you know um, it, it's not as exploitative as the first one I, I don't think there's really any sex in it that I can remember or recall it's just a lot kind of down um, darker, grittier and a lot more awful than the first one. Um, it's a lot more polished as well. The gore effects in this um, are, are a lot more sort of savage than the first one and the scenes of horror are just a lot more frightening. So Hostel 2 is a better more well-rounded horror movie than Hostel 1 is and it's probably Eli Roth's best film which is funny considering when it first came out I could barely sit through it but how times change. I have a lot more time for this movie now. It's uh, essentially a better, it feels a lot more grown up than horror film. They've gotten rid of the stupid sense of humour, they've gotten rid of the gratuitous nudity and sex. Not that I have a problem with that, but like I said, the first film didn't do it in an ironic way and it was just a little bit painful to watch. Um, this film is a lot more grown up and it, it feels like the work of a director who is really finding his feet um, after a couple of Cabin Fever, I really like his first film, don't like Hostel, but this is certainly showing that Eli Roth has grown up as a filmmaker, so I would highly recommend Hostel 2. Um, if you've seen the first one and you didn't like it, this takes what was good about the first one, expands on it, builds on it, has better acting in it, it's a better movie. So that's Hostel 2. So as always, thank you for watching uh, this video, I hope you've enjoyed it, please rate, comment and subscribe, I really appreciate it, thank you.